ऑल इंडिया रेडियो चेन्नई टुनाइट इन आर प्रोग्राम ऑफ इंग्लिश वी ब्रिंग यू एन इंटरव्यू टाइटल पेंड टू परफॉर्म विथ डॉक्टर आर जगन्नाथन प्रोवोस्ट ऑफ सेंट टेरेजा यूनिवर्सिटी सेंट विंसेंट एंड द ग्रेनेडीन्स करिबियंस दिस इंटरव्यू इज बेस्ड ऑन द रेवोल्यूशनरी नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इन कॉन्वर्जेशन विथ डॉक्टर आर जगन्नाथन इस श्रीमती एम राज राजेश्वरी दिस इज अ फर्स्ट पार्ट टू अचीव इक्विटेबल सोसाइटी टू प्रमोट नेशनल डेवलपमेंट टू रेस स्टैंडर्ड टू द ग्लोबल लेवल द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी स्ट्राइव टू ब्रिंग डायरेक्ट ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन इंडियन एजुकेशन सिस्टम professor dr r jagannathan is here with us today to tell us more on this good evening sir good evening sir you have decades of experience especially in this education sector so how do you see the current scenario of indian education especially post independence in post independence at the time we got independence we had two major challenges in the domain of education one is that the moment the britishers have left india we had a great demand for filling up the vacancies in the tolic officers collector officers the army positions the railways etc so we had an urgent need to produce graduates so what we did was that we deviated from the four year degree program of most of the countries in the erstwhile world at the time 1947 we converted a three year degree course like ba bsc bcom and started producing as many graduates as possible at the shortest possible time and this was one major challenge and this how the government of india handled it then the second thing the india government just concentrated on the adult literacy program mm. because the adults were not able to read and write so they were not able to read and write even their names father's name village name like that so the government of india brought down a syllabus of 12 words which it thought it should be taught to all the adults in the country so what's your name your father's name your city name or village name like that toilet bus things like that where they have been taught to write and also to read that's why in the railways we used to see the diagrams of gentlemen and ladies were drawn in the toilets because they were not able to read and write so these two were the major challenges this is how things went up to 1965 this we can call it as the phase 1 of the program then in the phase 2 from about 1965 to 1995 india wanted to produce its own engineers its own doctors its own lawyers its own scientists like that then in phase 3 that is from 1995 onwards to 2015 india wanted to expand its base of professional education so the government solicited private participation and hence a spate of engineering colleges medical colleges nursing colleges physiotherapy colleges bed colleges were opened in the country now we are in the phase 4 from about 2015 onwards till date india wants to produce its own engineers but world class its own doctors but world class its own scientists but world class for this to be possible the national educational policy followed since 1986 is to be thoroughly revised to produce world class educated youth in india that is a very interesting history that you've shared with us sir you stressed on that world class so i thought i should ask you from there do you think there is a dire need to revamp this education sector and why do you think it's very essential at this time education is fundamental for achieving full potential of a human being and also any country nelson mandela says that education can make the daughter of a farmer as a doctor the son of a mine worker as a head of the mine itself and a child of a humble teacher can become the president of a nation please recall dr babu rajendra prasad our first president he is the son of a humble teacher so education will be making a nation powerful so there is an urgent need to increase the quality of our educational system so what is your immediate take on national education policy how do you see this and do you think this will help of the total revamping that we are looking for sir yes the government of india has systematically proceeded on this matter in shaping up the new educational policy it solicited it formed a committee it solicited opinions and suggestions from all state governments all educationals in the country all teachers school level college level research level etc and all stakeholders 
So the NGP thus formed was approved by the union government in July 2020-20. The main thrust of NGP is a holistic development of all students, all learners, nursery level, school level, university level, all learners, all students irrespective of caste, creed and religion. The root cause of deficiencies of the present system are handled in the NGP and hence it is superior to achieving our goals. Now that you've said it is NEP is really superior, like you've been, you know, with your vast experience, you should have seen a lot of education policies that were formed and, you know, what impact it has been making. So how does this NEP stand out from the other previous policies and what major reforms do you think it can bring in? So far we are having that 10 plus 2 in the school educational system. So up to 18 years of age, a student is undergoing this. Now in the NGP, we are split it into 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 years. The merits of this system is that the formerly uncovered age group of 3 to 6 years are now brought under formal curriculum guidelines. Since 3 to 8 years has been recognized globally as a critical time for development of the mental abilities of a child. So we should catch them young. Then globally it was found that if a child has been taught the literacy and numeracy skills yearly, mm -hmm. then the school dropouts will automatically will come down. So the NGP emphasizes also on teaching the young children in their mother tongue or regional language only. No compulsory language in NGP. Government of India has declared it in the Karnataka High Court on March 9, 2022. Government of India has formulated schemes to prepare the necessary textbooks in all regional languages. So the NEP aims to increase the gross enrollment ratio, normally referred to as the GER, to 100% in the preschool to secondary level by 2030. The GER now in the US is about 93% and in many other countries it's around 90 to 95. But India hopes to achieve it to the extent of 100% by 2030. For example, certain interesting facts are available globally. If you just go to Netherlands, which is having the one of the best possible educational systems at the school level, if you ask any student or a parent in Netherlands as to what you want to become, most of them will say that they want to become a teacher. But in India, people will say, I want to become a doctor, I want to become an engineer, things like that. What's happening really? So, the national asset is to be built up from education. Further, the best talented people should be drawn into the stream of education. So for that, the NGP has made a beautiful enroll and an announcement and a scheme. What it says is that you admit eligible and meritorious candidates in from all sections of the society to college education system, to the university education system. From every institution, in every class, if you pick out students who are in the top five of the class. In case they say after finishing their graduation and post-graduation and research, if they want to become a teacher, if they give an undertaking to that, then their entire university education cost will be borne by Government of India. So that means that we are ensuring now the best brains to become a teacher. So that means that's a very great boon as far as the school children are concerned. In the Western countries also, there are certain other tables which are normally associated in India. We are now saying that we, the student should not be exposed to a public or board examination at a very early stage. But in most of the Western countries, we have the board examination or the public examination is held at the fifth class itself. So now we say it may be a stress on the part of the student and also on the parents and also on the teacher, we say that. But it all depends upon the perception that we develop and assign to it. because. What happens in the West is that the student will be taking a public examination at the third standard at the age of eight or nine. If the students fare well, the students and the parents are appreciated. Mm. So they are happy. If majority of the students do not fare well, then the teacher is recommended for refresher courses. So if there is a poor result, nobody is blamed, but only corrective action is initiated. So it all depends upon how we perceive the deficiencies in the system. If the perception is changed, it is for the betterment of the system. And also another thing, when they are children in the schools, they are seeing the world, real world around them. So we should not be having hard demarcation between arts and sciences, 
between curricular and extracurricular activities between vocational and academic streams there should not be any hard barrier between these subjects but at the same time we should be having a state school standards authority should be set up and the nep is precisely going to do that so that the quality is ensured throughout the country okay so what other exposure do you think the children is getting as early as when they are in schools sir as far as the schools are concerned they are supposed to expose the children to the real world that is the aim of the school education they should be in a position to develop interpersonal relationship with their own members of the family with the members of the society and they should be in a position to interact with their experiences with the world so for that whatever is needed we should be in a position to equip with them the curriculum should be like that and the training should be like that only then that forms the foundation for them to absorb the higher education when they come to the university level mm-hmm. so when you spoke about the teachers you said you know the best brains are going to come into the education stream that's one major strength of this nep so what will be done to the existing teachers like what kind of training will they undergo and what kind of training do you think they should undergo this is an excellent question because uh, what is to be done with the existing workforce we can't do away with them but at the same time we will be in a position to give them orientation programs refresher programs coupled with incentives so that they will be in a position to willingly undergo the transformation that's what ngp is concentrating upon a special agencies will be created for this purpose so that the educated workforce is reconverted into competent workforce to handle the education system both at the school level and also at the university level unlike the earlier system you know right now if you think i can't join my uh, child in the 8th standard or directly in the 9th standard or in plus 1 these are all considered as the crucial time so do you think you know this continuous assessment of which nep is suggesting will help you know monitoring the children and their growth in a practical way as far as nep is concerned it has made two major distinctions from the current system one is to get rid of this rote learning method mm-hmm. the rote learning is nothing but a memorization technique based on repetition to keep the information in the brain this technique is really needed in a very early stages to train the brain one example is memorizing the alphabets memorizing the numbers the tables etc but it is needed at the very early stages only but we should switch over to conceptual learning very shortly by exposing the students to the real world issues in the usa in the europe the education at the school level is viewed as a tool to expose the children to the real world especially for young children like the 4th or 5th standard for example if you just take a plant is growing out of a seed what we do in india and many other countries is that we draw a diagram of the seed label the parts definition of the root and the stem parts of the root then parts of the stem leaves flowers parts the student is supposed to buy heart the diagram labels mm-hmm. etc and reproduce only then they'll be getting a credit but in the conceptual learning what we do is a seed you describe what a seed is then you talk about a sprout then you say the sprout's survival needs root hairs then you talk about seedling then you say the seedling requires stronger root stem and also a stem then you talk about an adult plant it needs primary secondary tertiary roots stem nodes leaves flowers parts etc then it becomes easily sliding way of pushing the information into the brain of the children okay. that's a conceptual way of doing it this is needed both at the school level and also at the university level thank you so much sir it has been such an insightful uh, interview with you and we want to know more about this national education policy and uh, we get to know more about it in the next part of our interview thank you so much with have a great day <laughs> Listeners you just listen to the first part of an interview titled Pend to perform an interview on the revolutionary national education policy of the central government the interviewee was Dr R Jagannathan provost St Teresa University St Vincent and the Grenadines Caribbean in conversation with him was Shrimati M Rajarajeshwari With that we come to the end of this edition of program in English and that broadcast was brought to you from the Chennai studios of All India Radio. <laughs>